Today I want to talk about Matt Jensen, the coach, and what happened. My disclaimer, I do not know exactly what happened. All I have heard is second and third hand information. Although I might not know the details of it, there are aspects of this situation that, uh, let's see, for lack of a better word, make me nervous, make me scared, make me concerned. Because when I grow up, I want to be a great coach like Hani Rambad. And I'll be the first to admit, I've listened very carefully to everything that Matt Jensen has had to say about coaching and nutrition. The only thing that I know for sure is that Nick Walker and Matt have parted ways professionally. I don't know if they have parted ways friendship wise because you know last we heard they were great friends. I'm not crazy about the way Nick didn't show up at that show. I'm sad for Sean Clarita. You know, he did show up looking smaller. And then to hear what Clint Beastwood had to say, and then Brett Wilkins leaving, and I don't know about Justin Shire. So Matt Jensen did make a post on Instagram, and I saw a lot of the comments, and a lot of I was afraid to look at the comments because people can be so freaking mean on comments, whether on Instagram or YouTube. And they were pretty much all positive, you know, supporting Matt. So once again, I don't know the full story of why Matt lost all these clients. So why, what does this have to do with me? Well, I have been a personal trainer and training people since 2011. I have been a nutritionist since 2018. And it's only been in the last two, three years that I have, well, now it's longer than that. I started putting people on stage in 2019 and 2020. I forgot about that. So I have been coaching, prep coaching for a while. And one thing I've heard about Matt is that his coaching was very formulaic. Do I know this to be true? No, I don't. But what is happening to him right now are important lessons for all of you coaches out there. And it's, it boggles my mind how people call themselves a coach uh, just because they've done one amateur show and did okay and now all of a sudden they are a prep coach uh, <laughs> and you know have no real certifications no no educational background no bona fides no certificates they just are winging it just because they've done it once for themselves and now they think they're experts and they can do it for everyone else so the one thing I have learned, especially, so back to this formulaic thing. So I realized that, you know, you cannot be formulaic when it comes to nutrition. You know, I have my, the basic principles that I get started with, with new clientele, but I am a very holistic coach. Um, I'm looking at the overall picture uh, their overall health, mental health, everything in between, because all of those things make a difference how your body absorbs nutrition and what you like and what you don't like. A lot of these online coaches don't spend enough time actually talking to their clients and they actually don't know the right questions to ask because they've never been educated about this kind of stuff. So their programs are very formulaic and might, could you do well? Sure you could. You absolutely could, especially as a beginner. But the one thing, you know, I've really learned through coaching is that everybody's body is different. I had three guys in one show and I had to treat them all very differently. 
there. They had different body types. Each of them had aspects about their physiology that could not be done formulaically. So this is a kind of a big, it's standing out more in my mind than it used to. The next thing, you know, I heard about with Matt was that, you know, later he was telling people they had fake gear. And I don't know if they're getting gear from him. And when you're on that elite level, you should know whether your body is responding to a compound or not. So I don't see how someone could get through almost an entire prep. Then the coach come out and say, well, you had fake gear. So why wasn't that noticed 12 weeks out, eight weeks out, four weeks out and try something different or try a different source? That I kind of put on the coach, but it is up to the client to say, hey, I feel like something's not right or why don't, why isn't this working? You know, that's, it has to be two-way communication. So I had a coach for a long time, Rod Smith. <laughs> One of my favorite expressions of his is that a closed mouth does not get fed. So I'm always telling my clients, you have got to ask me questions. If you don't ask questions, then I won't know if something is wrong. You know, nutrition wise, people think that nutrition is easy and it is really complex, really complex. And I've had a nutrition client that, you know, I, I got to a point where I could do nothing else. It needed medical attention, and that is above my pay grade. You know, I still talk with them, and they keep me updated on what's going because this is all important learning history for me, too. So anytime I have a client who has some type of... Uh, physiological, hormonal, even mental issue, or just, then I want to know everything about it. So if I run across this again, you know, I'll have at least an idea of where to, you know, get some guidelines and how we fix this or know where we go to fix it uh, or, and see the red flags that tell me, Hey, this needs to be handled by a medical professional right away. I am a very cautious coach, any personal trainer, you have to do no harm. This is another aspect I heard about Matt Jensen, that there was an aspect of, I'll, I, I don't trust him. Trust is everything. Trust is earned and not just given. Um, but trust has to be, you know, it's a two-way street. Trust can't be just in one direction. That is something, you know, that I really I have, I, it is my job to establish the trust that they can trust me what I'm doing and for them to know that I care about them. And from what Quint Beeswood was saying about Matt, he was, you know, frequently making comments that, hey, something's not right, something's not right. And Matt wasn't responding. Then there's this loss of trust, which also leads to, you know, communications issues. I am nowhere on Matt Jensen's level. He runs a you know extremely successful supplement company. You know, like me, he's a you know has a family and everything, and you know client responsibilities. And he's trying to do his own thing with his body, in the same way I am. So you know he got stretched really thin, and that's something that I will not let happen to me. I'm going to put a cap on my team that I honestly, I don't want any more than 10 people on my team because I want them to know that when it is time for them to shine, I need to be there. And if I'm trying to divide my time between 20, 30, 40 other people, they're not going to trust me. They're going to think that everything I do is formulaic and I don't think I would have success. You know, all my competitors that I've put on stage have been happy and happy with the results and they see their off season uh, progress. I think that's one reason why Hani Rambad also does not take 
a lot of clients, it's because he knows that he cannot put his full attention on a whole lot of people. And from what I understand, Matt had uh, a lot of clients aside from these very elite clients. So that's something else that we, we've got to learn and walk an issue. We need to walk away and realize that, hey, I can't let that happen. Another important aspect of you know, being a good coach is knowing how to tell them the truth. I like the way Hani Rambad calls his podcast the truth. From what I understand, he never tells his clients that they are perfect. Um, he would, he would all, he always says, well, we could probably do a little bit more work on that. The one thing I do not want to do is blow smoke up someone's ass. Uh, I would really hate it if someone blew smoke up my ass, told me that I could do something and knowing full well that that's not going to happen. And what I've heard about Matt is that he was promising, you know, these clients, you know, the moon. They are, they are, you know, some of these people are actually in reach of the moon, meaning the Olympia, you know, the, the top level, you know, IFBB shows no disrespect to my clients, but I don't have anybody who is elite level, but I have a team of people who are really excited and working hard toward on their physiques. So that's another thing that I'm really trying to make sure that I don't blow smoke up somebody's ass and I tell them the truth, but obviously you have to do that in a, in the way that's not going to hurt their feelings or they're just going to be have to be man and woman enough to stand up to the truth. So my former coach was very much like that. You know, I would much rather somebody tell me the truth than I don't like to use the word gaslight than just telling you what you want to hear and then not getting the results that you want on stage. The next thing I want that I think that a lot of people, that I would think probably even 95% of, you know, the, the lower level of competitors might not understand. And that is every year your body is going to look different. And when you get near the peak of your, a, your genetics or wherever, you're probably only going to have one, two, maybe three best looks on stage for your entire life. I've said this before, but most people have no understanding whatsoever of how hard it is to peak. Each year I've gotten bigger body weight on stage. I was much bigger this year on stage. I was more than five, maybe like seven pounds heavier this year on stage. But I don't think I was quite as diced. But that was really not my objective because I know that when I get super duper diced, uh, it makes me look really flat. Like Jay Cutler, there was 2009 was the year that he probably looked the best. And with Phil Heath, you know, maybe 2013, where they just hit a look, you know, the timing, the stars, everything worked out perfectly, where they get that look. And people have to understand, and a coach cannot guarantee that a client will have a new and better look every single year. Because if that were the case, we would see that on the Olympia stage year after year after year after year. So it just doesn't look that way. There is a lot to learn from Matt Jensen and what has happened. And I will, you know, I will be following very closely to, to figure out or to understand what happened. But there are some essential lessons here that were worth learning as a coach of a team, you know, these are the things that, you know, I want to make sure 
that I don't do, you know, that I don't fall into these these traps of just all you want to do is have a whole lot of cust- a whole lot of clients and make you know and make money. Um, yeah, it's nice to make some money. I am a teacher, and helping people achieve their dreams is. Man, that's like the hokey pokey to me. That's what it's all about. Well, as Forrest Gump says, that's all I got to say about that. So I would like to hear what you have to say about this. So please put your comments below and please be nice. Woe be it to the people who leave nasty client, nasty comments. And when I'm in a foul mood, I will go off. I admit it. So please hit that like button and uh, I'd be interested in hear what you have to say. This is Yaakov Baram. Yalla bye.